मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज सिविजय गिरीश कुमार एल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर विज्ञान यूनिवर्सिटी सो वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन एसीईडी अपरल कॉस्टिंग एंड एक्सपोर्ट डॉक्यूमेंटेशन यूनिट थ्री सो फार इन यूनिट वन एंड यूनिट टू वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वेरियस कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू द वेरियस कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू द कॉस्टिंग ऑफ फाइबर्स यान्स fabrics and all okay and the cost of processing now we are in the phase of discussing about the cost of trims and also the entire cost sheet itself so in this cost in this uh, class we will discuss some of the other components which are very commonly used for apparel their cost components like sewing threads buttons zippers and interlinings so in this video we are going to discuss the cost of the the costing of the sewing threads costing of the buttons costing of the zippers and costing of the interlinings specifically okay in the earlier videos we have discussed a brief about these costs in this video we are going to discuss in detail about this cost of these components sewing thread is a part of the trim okay so if you consider any of the garment the components of the costs will be fabric prints cmt then any of the value added services like printing embroidery washing appliques and any of the testing requirements for these garments and also the quality requirements of these garments all it also consists the transportation and logistics cost and of course the profit for the manufacturing unit you know, these are the components okay so almost in all videos we are discussing this so that at least this concept will uh, be properly understood for you okay so the part uh, where much which we are discussing is the trims okay so what are trims again trims include all the materials other than the fabric which are used in manufacturing a garment those are nothing but called as the trips okay so the sewing thread the sewing thread after the fabric the main concern for us is the sewing thread okay not for the cost purpose mainly but uh, the strength of the seams the strength of the seams and the durability of the product which mainly lies with the sewing thread quality after the fabric the main component is sewing thread okay so obviously we will uh, consider the sewing thread cost next to it once first is the fabric cost then the sewing thread will come into the picture okay is it very expensive a spool of thread or all that's all right it's not too expensive but the effect of sewing thread will be very very vast in terms of the garment quality in terms of the garment quality if you use a inferior sewing thread obviously it is going to damage the quality of the garment and also the brand which is associated with that garment manufacturer so that's why we should not go or we should not think about the cost of the sewing thread specifically means we should not try to reduce the cost of the sewing thread okay so that is the reason and also the consumption of the sewing thread is also an, an important parameter which should be considered while you cut the cost okay the consumption so how much thread is required do we know say if i give you one garment how much thread is required for producing this garment is it possible yes we need to calculate as a department of ie industrial engineering or product development or costing department who will perform this costing of sewing thread or uh, requirement of sewing thread is dependent okay that may be either ie department or pd department or costing department it vary between company to company okay few companies they it will be performed through ie in few industries it will be performed through product development wherever the sampling and all will be taken right those people will do it. 
and in some industries and all what happens the specific costing requirement what they will do they will perform the swing rate requirement at their cost also ok so swing rate the quality wise it is the best and most important ok so in order to calculate the thread consumption sometimes the special software are also used so while ordering the swing thread and all wastage need to be considered ok say we have for consumer or we have uh, understood that per garment 120 meters of swing thread is required so what happens is 120 meters maybe we have 1000 garments so 1000 into 120 whether that much sufficient means 120,000 meters but what happens there will be various pools and sometimes the rewinding and all will take place obviously it is going to be a problem for that ok so we need to consider this wastage in terms of the uh, consideration and all understood so this wastage generally lies in the range of 10 to 15 percentage how much the waste the wastage range is generally in the range of 10 to 15 percentage so 10 to 15 percentage of wastage is quite normal and which is recommended also okay so okay how how do we consume means how we understand the consumption okay so generally the consumption of thread is calculated by most commonly IE department and it is dependent upon the, the type of seam and what is the SPI which is going to be used. The type of seam. Like you know the seams right, lap felt seam and uh, uh, what you call uh, the superimposed seams or flat seams depending upon the type of seams also. The swing thread thickness, the number of layers are going to change. Similarly, depending upon the SPA also, it is going to change. Okay, so what happens is we need to take proper care. We will discuss how we will arrive to the consumption. Okay, so while ordering the thread, operation breakdown and number of sewing machines for that particular style should be taken into account. What sort of operation bulletin is there and how many number of sewing machines are there which are going to work for this specific operation. Why? Sometimes maybe the requirement is say uh, roughly around 5000 meters only. So if you order only one 5000 meters of cone, okay, and maybe 10 machines are there which runs maybe a undergarment or very small uh, kits garment, the total consumption may be only 5000 meters. Okay. So what happens if you take one spool itself? So 10 machines, how it will be fed? It is not possible, right? Since the garment industries will be having more number of machines which are equipped in a simultaneous lines. Okay. So what happens if you pick only one big spool, it is not sufficient. The small spools are also required. Okay. If you put all small spools, if you order off all small spools, will that be a good thing? Yeah. So in operation bulletin, we need to find is there any feed off arm machine or Kansai machines? Kansai machine means multi thread chain stitch machines or feed of arm machines which require a consistent supply package in terms of a bigger package minimum of 2000 meter or 5000 meter if you put 120 meters or 300 meter spools for them what happens the operation efficiency will go down due to inconsistent or inconsistent supply of the swing thread so in order to avoid that we need to understand the type of machines from the operation bulletin and how much sort of means what type of packages we need to keep in, with respect to uh, each type of machine. Means if you find any feed of arm or uh, uh, what you call the Kansai machines within the operation bulletin, so the costing department will should uh, keep what you call the bigger ones. Okay. And if it is only all single needle long stitch machines, maybe smaller spools. Understood? I hope you. That is the requirement of operation bulletin. That is the requirement for the operation bulletin. And the type of machines we should understand before ordering or costing. Okay. But the entire cost may not be directly dependent upon it, but it is slightly dependent upon it. And uh, accordingly, we will find out how many number of cones of 
threads needs to be identified. Okay, so in the thread consumption, there are several factors that determines the uh, thread consumption. Okay, so as we discussed, it, stitch type, seam type, material thickness, the number of layers, construction, SPI, all these things will affect the sewing thread consumption ratios. Okay, so what is the best way? So these factors, okay, are not constant with different styles. Obviously, all these six parameters would be discussed are going to change from style to style. So the thread convention is never standard for sewing product category, such as shirts, trousers, or footwear. But these things are not. What happens with the sewing thread convention is never be constant. It's like changes with the thread. Okay. So basically, if you ask, two methods are there. There are two methods generally used to calculate the amount of thread in a seam. So it will use the thread consumption. Okay. One is the best method by measuring the actual amount of thread consumed. Okay. You make a sample garment. Okay. So from that garment, what maybe one meter seam is there. You rip off ten centimeter of seam. And measure the sewing uh, thread length. Okay, that is one way. So this way, what happens? The actual consumption will be come into it. The other one is by calculating using a thread consumption ratios. You know, right? Uh, thread consumption ratio. Say in case of a single needle lock stitch machine. So one needle thread will be there and one bobbin thread will be there. So the needle thread and bobbin thread. So for one meter needle thread requirement is 1.25, bobbin thread requirement is 1.25. So total 2.5 times is required. Similarly, a 401 means uh, what happens? 4.5 times. And similarly, these kind of ratios yes, we will discuss these also. We go through these sort of ratios that will give the thread consumption. Okay. So one is you repeat off. And use it. Another one is use the conversion methods. And also the third method is there with the software. So in the software, based on the number of plies and various other parameters, the thread conjunctions are slightly altered and which will give more realistic approach. Okay. So the measuring actual thread conjunction, if we discuss in this one, a specified length is given to the seam, which will be taken out. And then which will be pulled out and by dividing the amount how much we have pulled and what is the actual length depending upon that we will get a ratio and accordingly we can find out the uh, thread actually crunching okay so this factor once we find out so with respect to this by adding a 10 to 15 percent of uh, wastage of the thread we can uh, understand the consumption ratios we can understand the consumption ratios so what happens the wastage so sir 10 to 15 percent may be high why it is so this 15 percent wastage is basically due to the shop floor conditions like machine running thread breakage repairs mending all these things will come on to come under these circumstances these examples show basically the total thread consumed for one type of stitch class in a garment. So by following the similar procedure for different types of seam classes and all, uh, stitch classes and all, we can derive the total amount of uh, thread consumed in constructing of one garment. Okay. So we will take an example. Just take paper and pen and make a note of this one. Let us take the example of the length of seam is 1 meter and the stitch class is 401. So 401 consists of how many threads? One needle thread and one looper thread. Two thread, chain stitch. 401. Multi thread, chain stitches, right? One needle thread and one looper thread. So the length of seam for which thread is removed. So out of this 1 meter seam, what we are doing, we are cutting only the 15 centimeter length. Okay. And from that, we will remove the thread from 15 centimeters. And we find that the needle thread, 
which is removed is 19.5 centimeter from 15 centimeters length of fabric if we cut and if we remove the needle thread thread is 19.5 centimeters per needle thread so the conversion of the factor is like 19.5 divided by 15 which comes to be 1.3 so whatever the length which is there the needle thread the ratio is 1.3 so for 1 meter sewing the thread which is required is 1.3 meter so 100 centimeter multiply by 1.3 the thread requirement is 130 centimeters thread requirement is 130 centimeters just make a note of this one yeah so similarly in the same example now we will see how much is the looper thread same length of seam is 1 meter stitch class is 401 and the length of seam which is removed is 15 centimeter the looper thread which is removed is 62 centimeters from 15 centimeters of seam if we cut and then if we remove the sewing thread is coming to be 62 centimeters so what happens the factor is 4.1 so in order to sew 1 meter continuously okay we will be requiring 4.1 meters of looper thread and 1.3 meters of what you call the needle thread so 1.3 plus 4.1 so it will become 5.5 understand it yeah so in this example itself so the length of seam is 1 meter and the stitch class is 401 so the total needle thread conjunction is 130 centimeter and looper thread conjunction is 4.1 meter so the total thread consumed is 5.4 meter okay so the total thread consumed is 5.4 meter by adding wastage and all, what happens if you want to sew for 1 meter with a stitch class of 401, you will be requiring 6.2 meters of sewing thread. I hope you are getting this point. In order to sew 1 meter length only of a stitch class 401, we will be requiring 6.2 meters of sewing thread. That includes both the needle thread and also the looper thread needle thread and also the looper thread okay for sewing 1 meter we will be requiring 6.2 meters okay like similarly the easier method is like now this is one way that uh, each uh, type and each product category and each style we need to cut a small part and see this factor and accordingly we will do it okay this is one way the other way is that the thread consumption ratios okay we already know right a few of them like uh, stitch class 301 lock stitch 2.5 okay the number of needles are one needle thread percentage is 50 percent looper thread percentage is 50 percent similarly in case of 101 chain stitch the thread consumption usage is four times 4x and only one needle thread will be there so the needle thread ratio is 100%. There is no looper thread in case of stitch class 101. Okay. Similarly, a 401 as like what we have just discussed. A two thread chain stitch. 5.5 is the factor. Number of needles is 1. So out of this, the needle thread ratio is 25% and looper thread ratio is 75%. Understood. Similarly, if you consider all these types are nothing but the various types of stitch classes and how you are going to derive this okay just make a note of this so 301 2.5 101 4 401 5.5 304 zigzag lock stitch 7 503 2 thread over lock chain stitch 12 okay 501 504 which is a combination of a lock stitch and 503 isn't it so three thread over edge stitch sorry. three thread over edge stitch 504 okay this is 14 14 is the ratio yes and 512 four thread mock safety stitch means combination of two thread overlock and also a lock stitch understood so 
the total is 18 okay so similarly 5 and 6 5 thread safety stitches so this also consists of a combination of a lock stitch and 3 thread overlock 5 and 6 and so in this the ratio is 20 times so in order to sew 1 meter length of seam 20 meters of sewing thread is going to be useful out of that 20 percent for the needle thread and 80 percent for the uh, what you call the, the looper thread similarly four zero six the covering chain stitches okay 18 602 four thread covering chain stitch 25 times 605 five thread covering chain stitch 28 times so that means in order to sew one meter length for 605 type of stitch the ratio is 28 times 28 times understood so you may understand now now you understood right like uh, in order to make uh, so one garment is like very small one seam is very small but there are few types of seams that attracts 28 times of sewing thread so in order to sew 10 meters you will be requiring 280 meters of sewing thread itself but that much is generally required very rarely we also see how much is the general ratios for various types of garments yes yeah so in the same example if you consider this ratios so the length of seam is one meter i like the example earlier you have noted them right the same example we are taking so 401 two thread stitch so from this table the thread uses per centimeter of seam is 5.5 Okay, so for 1 meter it is 5.5 meters. 25% is the needle thread and 75% is the looper thread. So 138 centimeters and 412 centimeters. By putting this uh, 15 percentage wastage, 633 centimeters which came into picture. So how much earlier you got? 621 centimeters. Is it very near by? Yes. So, we can use the ratios also directly in case if you are not aware of that. But for the actual, if in, in case if it is any like uh, 500 garments or 1000 garments, you can go with the, a normal uh, uh, what called uh, with, with the ratios itself. But if the uh, order quantity is so huge in millions pieces, then the actual also can be taken. So, whatever actual we have taken. But if you adjust the tension and all what happens, obviously it is going to change, right? We cannot uh, keep the exact tension in all the machines. Yes, that thing is there. So that is taken care with respect to the 15 percentage wastage which we are ordering, right? Extra. That in that itself, that also will be gone. Okay. That much amount of uh, what you call uh, uh, buffer we can keep in such a way that by means of altering the tension and whatever the small changes which are going to be there that is going to be okay or covered in this buffer of 15 percentage yeah. so let us take an example of a knitted t-shirt just make a note of this one okay a knitted t-shirt so in this what happens say a lock stitch 301 okay the seam length is how many meters and the thread ratio is how much and the total thread consumed for this lock stitch in that the needle thread is how much and also the looper thread is how much similarly the various stitch classes which are there 301 504 then 401 503 101 these are the ones all the stitch classes which are used to prepare a t-shirt maybe like this okay so what happens if you consider in this way so it gives so the total thread consumption okay is 67 in that by adding 15 percent of wastage another 10 meters the total amount of thread which is required is 77.8 meters and out of that the needle thread is 24 meters and looper thread is 54 meters understood so this is how the sewing thread calculation or consumption will be derived generally in terms of the industry okay we will take another example okay so this is as per the stitch type itself but in generally what happens it will follow the industries will follow the operational bulletins okay like uh, where are the what are the different things okay for shoulder joint 
for neck rib overlock, neck turn stitch, sleeve attach, sleeve turn stitch, side seam, okay, and uh, sleeve hemming, button hemming, okay, main label attach at the back side, back yoke, moon patch, okay. So these may be operation wise, okay, for this operation, okay, for a specific operation, what is the seam length, which type of stitch it is, and what is the ratio for it, and accordingly what is the conjunction, okay. So once you put all these things, so what happens, 80 meters is coming, by considering a 10 percentage of wastage, understood. So this you should follow, okay, quickly make a note of this one. will be there instead of 11 it may be 30 in case of blazer even more operations will be there in case of formal trouser and all obviously more operations than a t-shirt this is an example so the in order to increase the efficiency and all the thread consumption calculator is also being used thread consumption calculator so you put okay what are the different operations so accordingly if you put a sleeve uh, hemming under so it will the software will help you in identifying the number of layers okay so even though the same stitch class what happens it will take the ratios based on the pre-existing preformed understood so it it is easy to use and uh, for uh, I means very simple understood people also can use it and the data integrity will be higher and uh, which will it means uh, more uh, what happens uh, efficiency can be obtained understood so through this thread conjunction calculators few of the industries will use the thread conjunction calculators or many of the industries will go with a simple excel sheet okay so this chart shows us what is the approximate sewing thread requirement approximate sewing thread requirement okay so i will give you two minutes to make a note of this whichever you feel like important okay if you see in this one yeah i'll move if you see in this one what happens the aprons which require only like 20 meters of consumption say blouse 100 similarly like a boiler suit okay maybe in case of a chain stitch under something like only 420 what you call uh, meters in case of uh, uh, what you call caps uh, dresses uh, dressing gowns uh, handkerchiefs how much is the requirement for a handkerchief only 5 meters okay similarly if you consider the jeans and all it is 210 meters okay t-shirt a basic simple round neck t-shirt 50 meters a shirt a men's shirt will attract 120 meters. A boy's shirt may be 75. Understood. Skirts 100. Understood. So, men two piece blazer. So, 480 meters and all. Understood. So, depending upon the type of garment and all, the depending upon the type of garment and all, it will vary. Generally, it will be within the range of 20 meters to 500 meters. The normal, if you ask in any of the interviews also, how much a shirt sewing thread requirement is, you will be able to say, sir, 120 meters. Yes. Even that is the requirement. Uh, if you see in any of the small tailors and all, they will purchase the small spools, right? Okay. The spools, small spools like uh, even moon. Uh, or uh, epic uh, something like the Vardaman and uh, Madhura Quartz, so many manufacturers and that. These small spools like 4 rupees, 5 rupees and that, it will come with 120 meters. Why? Because basically for one shared construction, it is required by 120 meters. 
basically that is the reason it will be kept as it is. Understand? Yeah. So, okay sir, all this okay, what is the cost of the sewing thread, how much it will be? Okay, it will vary between 4 paisa to 60 paisa per meter. 4 paisa to 60 paisa per meter. Okay, means lowest to highest. 4 paisa means lowest. Generally, the cost is in terms of apparel industries 6 to 10 paisa per meter. Normally, 6 to 10 paisa per meter. That means if I say 120 meters of sewing thread is required for manufacturing of one shirt. So, 120 into 10 paisa. That means almost like how much? 120 meters into 10 paisa. Isn't it? So, that will be 12 rupees max. Okay. So, 6 paisa. So, 6 meter. How much? It is roughly around 7 rupees per garment. The sewing thread cost of a shirt. Okay. 7 to 10 rupees is the normal cost. Per meter, if you consider, 4 paisa per meter is the minimum. 60 paisa per meter is the highest. Maybe a gutterman thread which is imported and so good. Okay. okay. And the cost is mainly dependent upon the brand. How many number of plies are there? What is the ticket number? What are the finishes which are applied to the sewing thread? And the structure of the yarn, whether it is a coarse pan yarn or a normal pan yarn or whether it is polyester staple yarn or polyester filament yarn, all these things are going to affect. And we will be requiring a not free yarn for the sewing thread. Okay, it should be having excellent strength, excellent color fastness, excellent elongation properties, no shrinkage. You know all the properties which are required by the sewing thread and all, right? I do not need to reply, uh, uh, retell to you, but the cost is going to depend upon them, okay? But the general costing will vary between 4 paisa per minute, meter to 60 paisa per meter, yeah. So this is about sewing thread cost. Now, let us discuss about the button cost. Okay. Button is a type of closure which is commonly used in many of the garments, most of the garments. Okay. Along with the button, sometimes maybe zipper and other things are also will be there. But the buttons are the ones which are very easily and most commonly used in terms of the apparel closures. Closures are the one which will open and close. Isn't it? That is nothing but the Closer. Okay. So, in the buttons, the size is the one which is an important parameter. And the button size, which is generally measured with line system, L I G A A. 1 inch diameter is equal to 40 line. Width. Okay. So, the most commonly for shirts and 16 or 18 line is used for shirts as the top button. 16 or 18. In case of a button down button, that may be a 12 line or 14 line. So, buttons are the ones which are very commonly used and various kinds of materials can be used as buttons. A normal, as like in this figure and uh, which one, uh, the ones which will be used are like, like polyester buttons, polypropylene buttons, polyethylene buttons, okay, or nylon buttons. Okay, plastic buttons are nothing but these ones. And apart from this, acrylic based buttons, like chap buttons, for wood, uh, it's the element and all it will be there. Apart from this, even the natural materials like wood buttons, metal buttons, shell buttons, and horn buttons, horn buttons or bone buttons, similarly mother of pearl buttons, okay, various kinds of buttons are there. So, depending upon the type and the, it is going to change. And generally, the buttons which are sold on the basis of gross. Okay, on the basis of gross. One gross is also referred as one packet, which is equal to 144 buttons, which is equal to 12 dozens. 12 12s are 144. Okay, similarly, one uh, great gross. Great gross means 12 grass. Okay. So, 12 into 144. 1728 pieces. That is referred as one great gross. Okay. So, every type of button has its own MOQ. 
like in case of costly buttons and all, the minimum order quantity may be less, like maybe 5 grass, 10 grass also available. But uh, maybe a polyethylene, polypropylene buttons itself, minimum of 200 grass or 100 grass is minimum. Understood? So sometimes uh, if you reach the MOP, then only the better price will be. Understood? So the minimum order quantity is one of the important thing. Apart from this, the better whether it is a two hole button or four hole button, what is the thickness and whether it is there any ridge or not, whether any customized name is required or not, on top of the buttons and all fashion will be written. Similarly, your logo, like maybe Louis Vuitton or uh, Alan Soli, something like that. If you want the brand name on top of it, obviously the cost is going to be higher, isn't it? So, the normal polypropylene, polyethylene or nylon buttons are generally in the range of 40 to 70 rupees per grass. Minimum of 200, 200 grass is the main on that. Okay. But if you see the mother of pearl buttons, algebra, mother of pearl. Okay, pearls will come from the shell, right? The shell will be cut into the shape of uh, the button and made the holes. So what happens, these are both very brittle in nature, but what happens, natural material and shiny material. So that is the reason the mother of pearl buttons are very expensive. These buttons, per button itself, it will cost 3 rupees, okay, like 350 per grass, 144, almost like 3 rupees, right. And uh, the wastage, in case of buttons and all, generally 5% in case of quality, BT, BPE and all. Uh, but in case of mother of pearl button and all, maybe up to 30% wastage. How much? 30% wastage. Okay. Each button is 3 rupees. Okay. And 30% wastage. So, some of these special type of button and all, the costing people should be very aware of it. In the specification, it is written as MOP buttons. Okay. So, that time you thought it is a... A PP button itself and accordingly 40 rupees or 70 rupees per grass accordingly you have given the costing and you have given the total quantity. But what happens when all these buttons are mother of pearl buttons, then uh, then what will happen? Obviously it is going to be a too much change in terms of the costing of it. Too much change in terms of the costing of it. Okay. Understood. So, these type of trims are made up with metallic, okay, and uh, the rivets and the shanks. The shanks and rivets are the ones, so here also the cost will be somewhere around 100 to 180 rupees per glass per shank, okay. Sometimes what will happen, okay, the pull buttons, the pull buttons which will be there. So that and all, what it will happen, the surface is coated with a different color or texture and all. So, those are very expensive again, okay. Uh, each button will cost around 2 rupees, means per grass it is up to 300 rupees per grass of metallic buttons. That is about the costing of the buttons. So, okay. The next component is zipper. Zipper is the one which requires brand name okay all the zippers are not so good so that's why there is a brand named ykk ykk zippers are uh, known for its quality and uh, almost all the branded garments will go for the ykk zipper ykk zipper okay so the zip fasteners there are four types individual metal teeth zipper then spiral coil zipper then uh, plastic molded teeth zipper and invisible zipper. Okay, these are the four types of chips. These are the four types of chips. Okay, again the cost is depending upon the brand, length, width, specifications, and okay. Each zipper may cost between three rupees to three hundred rupees. One zipper the cost may be three rupees to three hundred rupees. Understood? So generally, the metal zippers are most expensive than the normal ones and in case of invisible zipper the cost will increase by 20 percent. Plastic molded zippers are much cheaper than the metallic zippers. These are the things I could say. Okay. So the type of zipper plays a drastic role in 
result of the cost of the zipper. MOQ is the parameter which affects the cost of the zipper. Okay. So it will vary between 2 rupees to 200 rupees per piece. Per piece. Okay. So that is about the zipper cost. Similarly, the interlinings. Interlinings are the ones. What are interlinings? What is lining? What is interlining? Both are used for insulation purpose and to give additional uh, stiffness and uh, lining is the one which is in between. Interlining is the one which is not visible outside, isn't it? So a shirt is having interlining. So what happens? Both sides fabric is there. In between the lining fabric is there. That is referred as interlining. In that also, fusible interlining, non-fusible interlining. Also called as buckram cloth, right? So fusible interlinings are the ones which are mostly used. And again, these can be made from various like woven, non-woven and uh, knitted also. So, the purpose or the uses of interlining are like interlinings are used for various objectives. One is for increase in thickness, firmness, extra strength for a formal look to the shirt collar centers, and to give a firm, thick base to the embroidered logo. In case of embroidered logo and all, the interlining will be used at the back side to give the firm or thick base. And sometimes the interlining is soft and flexible and is an acts as an insulator. So it can be used in winter coats, pants for a thicker layer for insulation purpose apart from the uh, what you call uh, the appearance purpose. The functional purpose also is like what you call uh, the insulation purpose. And used behind thin fabrics, the four point used behind the thin fabrics so that whatever the opaqueness Okay, sometimes the fabrics are so flimsy that the skin may be visible. Okay, in order to avoid that, to make it less opaque, so this interlining will be helpful. And used behind embroidery to make it a piece look thicker and enhances the look to give the embossing effect. Embossing effect also interlining is used. Sometimes sewing cloths is easier and faster with the interlining. Okay, like collar in order to attain the shape under once the interlining is done, so it is easy to sew it. Now again, the color of the interlining can be chosen according to the color of the garment. Say white fabric, black interlining is not a good combination. So it should be the same. And also interlining affects the comfort of the garment, which is important to the wearer. So these are the various uses of the interlining. What are the properties which are required? It's basically good tensile strength, good elastic properties, good bending properties, and it should have the shearing and surface properties, and the fabric handle and drape should be improved. Okay, so these are the various properties of interlining. If you see the categories of the interlining, basically three types. One is with woven, knitted, and non woven. So plain woven, filled or canvas fabrics can be used as a woven interlining and uh, knitted, press knitted, warp knitted, non-woven, needle punched, spun bonded, thermal bonded. These are the various categories of the substrate. So in case of fusible interlining, on top of this fabric, the resin will be coated. Yeah. In case of fusible interlining, on top of the substrate, the resin will be coated. The amount of resin, type of resin, and the density of the resin, number of coats also will affect the So, if we consider the cost of the interlining as like 30 rupees to 250 rupees per 1 meter with 1 meter width. With 1 meter width. Depending upon the type of fabric it is, what type of resin it is, what is the GSM, and also the brand, which brand it belongs to. All these things are going to affect the cost of the interlining. Yes, I hope you understood. So, in generally, the trims, the consideration that whatever the base cost, it should not be the cost we should consider for the costing. The transportation cost and everything, the final landed cost, including all the freight charges, must be considered for the trims. Okay. 
in case of sea shipment 10 to 15 percent and in case of air shipment it may be little higher also all the transportation charges until it reaches our uh, thing our warehouse we should consider all those things as the trims cost okay i hope ki we have covered all the trims in detail earlier we have discussed in brief in unit 2 of part of the class in this uh, classes we have discussed all the major trims in detail that includes labels poly bags then uh, cotton boxes hand tags sewing threads now in this class we discussed sewing thread cost button cost zipper cost and interlining cost now i am confident that you can prepare appropriate or approximate cost given a garment the trims cost you can prepare understood so i hope you have noted down all the major components wherever the cost structures are null which are came in the discussion and uh, that's all for uh, this video okay so thank you very much for your patient listening and i sincerely believe that we learned something new today and this is going to be useful for your life so thank you very much